Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. Now I get asked all the time about what are the best paints for touching up uh, vintage Star Wars figures and how to go about it. So I thought I'd start a sort of mini series of uh, restorations where I show you how to repaint some of the most sort of common figures that have paint damage to them. And today we're going to look at Chewbacca. Now I have here a vintage Chewbacca which you can see has lost most of the paint from his bandolier. He's also lost the paint from his teeth and his nose. Actually the one thing that is reasonable on this figure is actually the little uh, bag on the side of his leg there that doesn't have many paint chips but uh, we'll still go ahead and sort of give this guy a little bit of a touch up and sort him out now when restoring figures like this there is no set paint that will match every single figure because all these figures sort of age differently over time. The white paint will be sort of fairly common, but if I take two figures from my collection, I have a Chewbacca here and another Chewbacca here, and we compare the bags on the side, you can see that both of those bags are very different colors. Now this uh, is because of age and also because of the factories where these were made. Some of the figures were made in factories where the paint was a bit darker, some were made in the factories where the paint was a bit lighter, or they just didn't have the right paint. So you'll find every figure has a slightly different color of paint. So there's no perfect match any time and you will always have to mix colors to try and get them to look as close to the figures that you're fixing as possible. We can have a look at another figure here. There's another Chewbacca from my collection. You can see that one is slightly greener so it really is a little bit random but uh, it's not impossible to match paints. So let's have a go at getting this Chewbacca looking sort of as good as he can do again. So for fixing up Chewbacca, I'm going to use uh, four different colours. I have uh, four Humbrol paints here. These are all Humbrol acrylics. Now I have white 22, which is a gloss white. I have black 21, which is also a gloss black. I have black 33, and now that is a matte black. And the reason I have both of those is because you can mix the colours together to get a sort of less shiny finish. And some of these paints you don't want a particularly shiny finish. And I also have a brown 75, which is what I'm going to use to try and match the colour of the sort of rucksack here. Although there's not a great deal of sort of paint missing on this one, uh, but we'll need a bit of that, or maybe a darker one if I have uh, a darker brown. But these colours should work. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix all of these and make sure they're nice and well mixed uh, and then we can get on with trying to uh, paint the fine details on his bandolier and his teeth which will be uh, in white first uh, and then we can deal with his nose and the rucksack last. So first up we'll deal with his teeth because these are the sort of the tiniest bits that you'll need to paint. Now the teeth vary again from figure to figure. I have a figure here where you can see his teeth and most of the inside of his mouth has been painted white. But if I bring in another one uh, you can see this guy only has the sort of front teeth and his two little fangs painted white. So it's up to you how you want to paint it. I'm going to go for just the fangs and the lower teeth because I think that looks nicer. So I've got a fairly fine brush if you can see that. Quite a thin brush. I'm going to just get a tiny amount of paint on this brush. If I zoom my camera in, you should be able to see how I go about painting it. And it really is just a careful, just a little dab of paint. There you can see that's one tooth done. Careful little dab there. So this is top, his top fangs painted. And then we can do the same, just a little light brush of paint across his lower teeth. Like so. Now you don't have to be particularly accurate because the original figures were pretty badly painted. Actually, you can see there's a little sort of gap there on the left. I will just fill that in. But just enough paint on there makes quite a big difference to how Chewbacca looks. And if you go wrong, just carefully wipe it away with your finger because this paint takes a little while to dry. So you can just wipe this away. And if you're not happy at all, like so if I see that now, I'm not particularly happy with how that looks. You could just get a tissue and dab a little bit of water on that and you'll be able to wipe that away. Like so. 
and then we can start again. So never never worry too much about painting. If you do things wrong, you can always go back while the paint is still wet. This uh, acrylic stuff is quite easy to dry. So you can see I've actually removed all of the paint there and we can just give it another go. So never panic too much if you're doing a restoration and it goes a little bit wrong. You can always sort of go back and forward. So let's do that again. A lot of this stuff is easy to do without the camera in the way, but uh, you can see you can still get quite good results even uh, when you're sort of obscured by what you're doing. So there you go, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. We can now move on to his bandolier. Now the bandolier is equally a sort of tricky job. You've just got lots of little oblong panels to paint. Uh, and this is a, a little bit of practice again, but it's not uh, too difficult because you're sort of following a, a pattern that is there. And I tend to go up one side, turn around and come back down the other side. And the bandolier stops uh, when you get to this shoulder. So you can see here it only goes as far as that top one. And if we turn the figure around, you, again, you can see it sort of starts just over his shoulder and comes back down his back. So uh, let's start painting these in. So I'm going to just move my camera so you can see. I've lied him down because it's a lot easier to work when the figure doesn't move about. And we can start painting these in. So there you go, that's one side done. We can now turn him round and we'll do the other side of this bandolier. So now that paint's had time to dry and we can uh, move on to the back. As I said, it sort of uh, doesn't go all the way along at the side, but uh, you can sort of just go up to the top. If you want to make this complete, then there are a couple of little uh, uh, of these sort of white bits on the top that you could paint, but the originals don't do that. So uh, let's just get this painted. We can move on to some other parts. Now for Chewbacca's nose, I'm going to be using a black uh, acrylic and this is the uh, gloss version. So this is number 21 black, as I said, uh, because if I look at the original uh, versions that I've got of Chewbacca, even though the nose is a little bit worn, you can see it's a little bit of a shiny nose and it is just a black colour. I can't uh, see any sort of tones to that. So uh, black should do it quite nicely. So again, I've just uh, mixed this up quite well. I'm using the same brush, which is the, the sort of nice fine point to it. Well, it did have a fine point till I've just uh, cleaned it. We can certainly get that fine again by the time we mix the paint in. The paint holds all the bristles together so you can see you can get quite a nice fine point. And I'm just very carefully going to uh, paint his nose back on. There we go. And that makes quite a difference putting his nose back on. Without that, he doesn't look quite like Chewbacca. So we just let that dry and then I can show you how to mix the colour uh, for the uh, pouch on his leg there. And then that will be Chewbacca done. So the last thing to do is the uh, bag on the side of his leg here. Now I've got a uh, number 70 and a number 33. These are matte uh, acrylics. And I've also left the 22 out, which is the gloss white. Now the if I just take a little bit of this brown 70 and paint a bit on, you can see it's quite light in comparison to the bag and so it doesn't really match. But if we uh, mix a bit of the black into that we should be able to tone that right down uh, to get it a much darker brown. It may be we need to sort of blend in a little bit of white as well uh, but it's quite a sort of dark shade. Sometimes you might need to add a little bit of green to these just because of the way these figures age. Let's just try a bit of that on there. You can see that's actually not a bad match. It's still a little bit dark. Again, I can just wipe, I just wipe that off while it's still wet. So it's mix a little bit more black in. Now, normally on a figure like this with such a tiny sort of little rub on it, I wouldn't bother painting it because uh, really you can barely even see that there's a rub there. But uh, just for showing you today, I just sort of mix these paints up. You can see that is a pretty good match now. It'd be hard pushed to actually even notice 
uh, that I'd painted that. So there you go, that's, uh, that is number 70 and number 33 sort of matches this colour. But as I say, the bags are all different, so it may be you need to find a slightly different tone uh, to make that sort of perfect match. But uh, that's a pretty good result, so I think uh, we'll class that as done. And here we have the final Chewbacca, he's this guy on the right, and as you can see he's looking uh, pretty fine now. Uh, the paint touch-ups on that is a fairly straightforward one to do. You do need a little bit of a steady hand just because uh, some of the bits around his face are quite small, but as you can see it can be done and it does make an otherwise quite sort of beaten figure look quite nice again. And even uh, comparing this to some of the other figures I have in my collection, the paint actually looks a lot better now than uh, the one that is my one on display here, which is this guy on the left. So it may be that I need to touch up the paint on that as well. So it's uh, not an exact art mixing the paint. Uh, I would suggest that you go to Humble's website. They have a colour chart where you can download that and print it out and that will give you a good idea of what the colours are you will need. But really you do have to mix stuff to get a lot of these things to match. And I also want to say a big thank you to Ian Thomas who very kindly donated this Chewbacca figure for me to uh, restore here. So thanks for that. And I hope that's been of interest to you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.